Hey everyone, this is Fred Shaw uh, coming at you live uh, from my uh, apartment in uh, in Pittsburgh. I hope this finds all of you doing well. Uh, I'm going to be doing some reading uh, for my new collection, Scraping Away, uh, fresh out from Cabin Carry Press. Uh, I'd love for you to check it out. So I uh, hope all you uh, friends, family, brothers and sisters in the service industry are all doing as well as you possibly can during this time. So uh, I'm just going to read some poems and uh, whenever this gets posted, uh, I'd love to hear any comments. If you have any questions that I could clear up about anything, uh, I'd love to hear that as well. But uh, thank you for tuning in and I uh, hope you enjoy. Uh, this is the, the title poem, Scraping Away. Once when we were new, a plate of seafood crashed to the kitchen tiles and became the first scallops some of us had ever tried. Scraping away the broken to save the unscathed, we chewed briny mouthfuls of gritty sweet meat, swimming in a sniff of garlic and white wine, thinking nothing ever tasted so good. As that moment passed into sounds of clinking silverware and carrying on, while Perry Como sang overhead, imploring us to learn the mambos to and fro. A lesson we'll soon take to humming in a heaping world that needs us to believe we can be oceans, pushing waves toward a shoreline we can't see, the worn down, far off places of ourselves. I'm uh, going to read just a couple of restaurant poems and a couple of others just to kind of let you know what's uh, what's going on in the uh, in the collection. Uh, another restaurant poem for you. This one's called Curse. Waiting for steak and fries beneath this dining room's cold light, I look on as Angelita, the stocky Paiute waitress, hauls ales and elk burgers to tables of Germans touring Utah parks on Beamer bikes. It took until senior year for me to balance a full tray of steaming chow, elbow wobbling until I learned to spread fingers wide, hoisting the fiberglass oval on the level plane of my palm, held steady above my right shoulder. And when the boss said to hustle, I wore a ready smile and worked without pause buffing lipstick from wine glass rims, scooping up what was left behind. Spoons and mugs half full of cold coffee, chicken bones and change, once slimy denture. Delivering dumb calories to hungry mouths is enough to consider the flocks of fried fowl, the braised and broiled herds I've lugged three plates at a time on one of my skinny limbs and to wonder if it's worth sharing with this hard-working woman, how I measured out my tired body by the decade, one arm grown longer than the other. Uh, my uh, one arm is actually kind of stretched out longer than the other. Um, so uh, a couple of uh, restaurant poems. Uh, I'm gonna find one more in here and uh, Again, if you have uh, any questions or comments about things, I'd uh, absolutely uh, love to hear hear them from you. Um, so this is another one I, I like. Uh, obviously, in this time of uh, time of need for all sorts of different things, I'm really thinking about uh, my time working in in the restaurants, missing uh, the camaraderie of uh, both the. Uh, both guests as well as my uh, my co-workers and uh, it's just been a long time since I I've uh, been away from restaurants for so long and uh, so it just has me thinking about a lot of people that are um, are, are in need right now and hopefully uh, things will come together in the near future so this is called cadre on Fridays I drive a ginger-haired friend to work another restaurant gig we landed years before his first DUI. And for 10 minutes, we trade tales of our aging parents, their homes and bodies failing, forgetting how they once told us we could be anything. Our promise rusted as my red pickup that rumbles 
into this back lot where air reeks of grilled meat and dried sweat, where busboys on break let one stale smoke off another, and a cook rubs his last dime over a stack of instant winds. Tonight, what we've come to bear beneath chandeliers built of driftwood will be memories of those bad dreams, their endless loads and slick floors, suffered until we wake, bone tired and thirsty. Come midwinter, my weariness, a mouthful of motherfucker, spit when my truck gets trapped in the driveway's icy grooves. And like a child in tantrum, all I can do is rock my body and spin the wheels into a cry. Uh, I'm going to move on to uh, a couple of other uh, poems. It was uh, been thinking about family uh, quite a lot as uh, as well, and so um, I'm going to read one about my uh, my grandfather uh, as well as my uh, my father. This is from my grandfather Bill Shaw. Easy to use as modeling clay. Elbow deep in the smells of grease and rust, I'm stuffing the guts of Grandpa's workbench into a cardboard box. Mismatched nut and screw by the pound, a stray doorknob from a Pittsburgh house. Those tiny bulbs for signal lights, his car always a beater. Tucked beneath one last shelf, small jars of plastic steel nestled in grimy cartons their black and gold script claiming a million uses for just a buck. Dried under each tin lid, something leaden and gray, like what might have rested at the bottom of this man I once adored. A hunky pipe fitter known to pack heat, to wear a wig when stoned, to bully when he didn't get his way. I was six when he let me slug his beer gut until my fist hurt. Leaving the cellar, it's the dewy side of his favorite glass I almost feel, holding one hand against it, skin and nail, helping him measure two fingers of chilled vodka until I could do it all on my own. Uh, let's see, so find Uh, this one's for my dad. Uh, it would have been 16 years this April since he passed away. And of course, many of us are thinking of him often. Iron City Sage. No one from the Eagles Club showed for his funeral, and it took eight years for my father to step into my dreams, looking hungry and disheveled as on those Sunday mornings I scrambled us eggs and burned bacon. From his weekend easy chair, He'd study World War, a parliament smoldering in that metal ashtray my sister bought him a decade before he winded easily. By night, with the irons going down easy, he'd forget to eat, then start with his playful jabs, asking me how tall I was, and with my answer, he'd reply, he didn't know they piled shit that high. I'd chuckle playing the faithful drinking buddy I couldn't be at 15. It took me until his end, when those blue tubes moved air through his ruined lungs, to appreciate how he shared himself through scraps and tales, the sum of his wisdom coming when he said, this world doesn't need any more assholes. Sometimes after the bar, he'd stand in our kitchen to conduct an invisible orchestra, arms waving while a cassette did its best to squeeze each blissful note of Beethoven's sixth through a tinny boombox. At the movement's finale, he'd puff another smoke, then turn to remind me to always strive for greatness. A raw-boned man in jeans and untucked work shirt, hoping to make my heart and mind simmer before he chased down each of his whims with a gulp of beer. 
Uh, I'm going to finish up with uh, a music-related uh, poem. This one's going out to my uh, my buddy Len Bogatz that uh, thankfully I've uh, kept in contact with uh, over the past year. It's been a, it's been a long time, and I'm glad he's doing well. So this is for Len out in, uh, out in Hawaii. Punk. I keep embarrassment in a stash, stacked and piled like yellowed news, in cracked plaster rooms, off behind the kitchen table of my mind. A place to visit my drunken faux pas, file away the fuck-ups and feel bad about the time I hit an old woman in the mouth with a jar full of maraschino cherries. Sometimes I thumb through to that time when Leo and I were 16 and we sat parked for hours in front of the electric banana. A punk club will never go inside out of fear our night might end in a busted nose from a swirling mosh pit full of knees. Our mischance to stomp and bleed on a sticky dance floor still jangles like loose change in a pocket full of sad attempts to fit in. But it's only after Leo's blonde hair is lost to glue and malt liquor in a botched attempt at dreadlocks, after he buzzed it close to the skull and we lose touch, that I'll come to know so well those minor threat cassettes that click in a dusty Delco tape deck while we watch the Iron City punks loiter about the bananas front door and their comfortable mohawks and effortless combat boots. Marooned and sober behind a foggy windshield, a lush hillside fails to take shape, and I find that, decades later, I am a self full of deeds undone, going places where so much is an idling Chevy with a paint job the color of contusion. Thanks for checking things out. Uh, stay well, folks, and I uh, hope that we're able to talk sometime soon. Bye.